at the end of the darkest week many in Southport have ever known. Tonight, we bring you two accounts from the tragedy which demonstrate the best of the community. The stories of two men who did good in the face of unthinkable evil. One, a grandfather who sheltered terrified children in his home. The other, a man who put his own life on the line. And that's where we start tonight. John Hayes ran towards danger from a neighbouring office and came face to face with a knife attacker accused of murdering three little girls. He tried to stop him, but was himself stabbed in the leg. He's now recovering at home from where he agreed to speak to ICV News. John told us he's no hero, but just wishes he could have done more to help the young victims taken from their families. John Hayes was at work in his office on what was a regular Monday morning. I heard lots of children running out the buildings, uh, screaming, shouting, and that itself isn't unusual because kids are very excitable normally when they come out of these classes, so that alone didn't surprise me or strike me as unusual. Um, but that didn't then die down, which it normally does, and um, some of my colleagues got up to look out of the window and it was only at that stage uh, when one of them uh, witnessed a young girl on the floor, uh, assume, I assume by the front door of the entrance to our building, and said words to the effect, there's a girl outside bleeding out. Uh, and as soon as I heard that, I ran. I basically ran the full length of our office to go and find out you know, if I could help and what, what, was, what was happening to her. And I never got as far as her because she was outside. So still on the first floor when i opened the of our office door i was confronted by another girl on the floor who who looked like she had multiple stab wounds and was heavily blood soaked and this guy in front of me with a with a knife who who then came towards me you know uh, in a pretty menacing way and, uh, and i thought he's going to kill me too if i'm not you know or um I, I, I didn't rationalise or, you know, you don't have time to do a risk assessment. I just put my arm up when this knife was coming towards me and uh, I didn't even realise I'd been stabbed initially until I looked down and saw blood coming out my leg and, and I tried to kick him with my right leg and then that's when I fell over. Because obviously... A colleague oh put a tourniquet on his leg shortly before the paramedics arrived. I didn't see anything of the... The, the sort of horror show outside when I was carried out on a stretcher because I'm, I'm horizontal and I had three guys on either side of me carrying me out the building. And they took me, strangely, I thought they'd be taking me into an ambulance, but they took me right down the car park and it's about 100 metres and put me in the road, which would become a, a makeshift holding area because there was, uh, it was a lovely sunny day. I'm lying on my back in the road on a stretcher, looking up at blue sky with sirens and flashing lights and people shouting and it, it was surreal, the, the, um, what was unfolding. But I, I wasn't really taking much attention of what was going on around me and having a look who else was injured. I was, I was just in quite a lot of pain and wanted to get into that ambulance and, and away. But I was probably in the road for, I don't know, it felt like perhaps 20 minutes or more. It could have been longer, it could have been shorter. Uh, but I was kind of waiting my time to get in the ambulance. I'm glad I didn't pleased that personally that I didn't have to witness all the anguish. Those parents arriving onto that scene, yeah, it must have been horrific for them. And I don't know how they'll, they'll you know, how they'll come to terms with that, it's, it's, you know, particularly the three parents have lost children, so. Uh, but others have had a lucky escape, including me. So. How do you feel when people say to you, you are a hero? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I was, I was brave about the whole thing and confronting a knife man, that's not the story at all. It's, um, and as I've said to everybody that's asked, I don't want this to be about me, I want this to be about the families of those three little girls. I'm really, really saddened to know what's happened and uh, it's going to take me a while to come to terms with that, it really is. How are you doing on that journey? Uh, not great. I had a, last night a few flashbacks which uh, weren't pleasant. Um, I'm still in quite a lot of pain, but I, I, I can get around. I'm hobbling around, learning how to lose, use crutches. Um, Helen's been hugely supportive. Um, it was really nice to see the, uh, my uh, guys from the office came around this morning. I wanted to see them and give them a hug. 
I also wanted to make sure that they were okay to, to try and assess how they were dealing with it. Uh, and I think by and large, they're all, they're all coping. John was discharged from hospital yesterday and he's relieved that others are recovering too. The parents of Leanne Lucas, I think her surname is, who was running the class, came to see me whilst they were in hospital. Um, obviously, I was concerned about her and they were concerned about me, but it was nice to meet and talk to them. Um, we didn't really discuss what had happened, but they just wanted to come and say hello to me. It was nice to see them. Are you able to share with us how Leanne is doing? I believe she's going to be OK. And I suspect that what she was doing was shielding children. So um, if you want to talk about real heroes, you know, um, then that's her, definitely. Um, John's wife, Helen, told me off camera that a police officer said he undoubtedly saved someone's life. But he says the focus should be on the three little girls who couldn't be saved. Would you like to say anything to the parents of those children? That well, only that my, my thoughts are with them. Um, I can't imagine what they're going through. Um, um, no, I'm, there's nothing I can say that will lessen their grief, I'm sure. Um, only that I'm sorry I couldn't have done more to stop it, but 